In the previous video, we looked at a technique to express the posterior density as a weighted sum of densities, one density for each hypothesis. Before we proceed and present the update equations in detail, it would be good to verify that the weights and densities have the interpretations that we've claimed, namely that the weights are the probabilities of the different data association hypotheses and that the PDFs are the posterior densities given a specific data association. Let us start by again clarifying the setting. We are still only looking at a single update step. The posterior density given the measurements is the prior times the likelihood. In single object tracking, the likelihood involves a summation over all possible data association hypotheses. In the previous video, we used g theta to denote the function inside the summation. We then explained how we can express the posterior as a summation over w theta times p theta of x. It was clear that w theta is a probability mass function and that p theta of x is a probability density function and the measurements z. In this video, I'd like to briefly highlight that these properties are reasonable from a certain perspective. Omitting the time index, it is possible to show that the product of w theta and p theta is the joint distribution of x and theta given z. You can find a short proof of this result on the homepage. Based on this result, several interesting relations follow easily. First, if we integrate over x on both sides of this equation, the left-hand side becomes w theta, since p theta of x is a PDF as a function of x, whereas the right-hand side becomes the probability of theta given x. That is, w theta is the posterior probability of the data association hypothesis theta. Second, if we divide both sides by w theta, the left-hand side becomes p theta of x, whereas the right-hand side becomes the joint distribution of x and theta, given z, divided by w theta. Now, we know that w theta is the probability of theta given z. Using the definition of conditional distributions, this yields that p theta of x is the posterior of x, given the measurements and the data association hypothesis theta. Finally, as a sanity check, we can use the above result to verify our expression for the posterior density by marginalizing both sides with respect to theta. The right-hand side then becomes the posterior of x given z, whereas the left-hand side becomes the summation over theta of w theta times p theta of x. As you can see, it all fits together very nicely, and to make sense of the equations that we are about to present, it is very useful to keep these interpretations in mind. 